Hello, my name is Michael, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can set up teleport to forward ordered events to a Fluent D collector and then visualize them in an Elastic stack. By the end of this video, we'll have an Elastic search instance indexing our events and a dashboard in Kibana to visualize them. There's a few things you'll need to get started. You'll need teleport version 6.2 or newer. I'll be using the cloud hosted version, but this will work just fine in the self hosted community and enterprise editions too. I'll also be using Docker to spin up FluentD, Elasticsearch, and Kibana, so make sure you've got that installed if you want to follow along with me. I'm going to start by installing the Teleport Event Handler plugin. And this plugin takes the audit log event stream from Teleport and sends it to our FluentD instance. And typically we recommend installing the plugins alongside the proxy, but you're welcome to install it wherever it suits you best, as long as it has access to the Teleport proxy. So I'll create this folder called Event Handler, and this will hold our configuration. And then I'll download the archive I'm using a Mac. So I'm downloading the Mac archive. And this contains a single binary that we're going to use initially to bootstrap the configuration. So I extract that and run the binary with the configure command. And I also supply the output directory and then the cluster. And this will generate our mutual TLS certificates for Fluent D. It also generate the user and role for Teleport, uh, as well as configuration for the plugin itself. Now, if we go to step three, where we create the user and role, the role that's been generated for us has just enough permissions to list and read the event stream. But we also need to apply it to our cluster. And in order to do that, we use Tcuddle which is our administrative tool for making changes to teleport clusters. So I run tcuddle, create, and then supply the YAML file that was generated for us. Now we've got a user with the minimal amount of permissions required. We need to export some credentials um, that the plugin can then use to authenticate it against our cluster. Go back to the documentation, we can copy this tcuddle auth sign then, which will generate those credentials for us. However, for cloud users such as myself, uh, you'll see that I don't have permission to impersonate other users. So uh, this command doesn't work for me. So I just need to run a perform an extra step. If that command worked for you, uh, you don't need to do any extra steps. I'll go back to the documentation and copy this uh, role. And this role just has the impersonate permission for the event handler user and role that we created before. So I'll copy that into my terminal. And then use tcuddle again to apply those changes. So that role has been created successfully but I do need to apply it to a user. So I'm going to assign it to my current user. So to do that, I use tcuddle get users and then supply the user. In my instance, it's my email address. And then I export that to a file and I call it out.yaml. Once that's been exported, I edit that in an editor. Um, you can see I've got the admin role I just need to add the additional role that we just created. And then use tcuddle to apply those changes. And in order for those changes to take effect, I do need to log back in again. So I'll use tsh login to log back in. Now that I've logged back in, I can rerun uh, the auth sign command uh, from the documentation. The top here. Okay, that command worked fine. So I can move on. So with that out of the way, we can move on to the FluentD folder. And we've got some generated Fluent 
configuration. And the configuration accepts events and it just prints them to standard out, which you can see at the bottom there, standard out. So that's fine for testing. So let's go back to the documentation and copy the docker run command that takes our configuration as well as the mutual TLS certificates. So let's run that. And that appears to be running successfully. We see Fluent D Worker is now running, uh, printed at the bottom. So with that running, we can start the event handler. And the event handler plugin generated its own configuration, um, and that's fine for, for defaults. There are some configuration options you may want to look at and change, such as timeouts and, and how many events to batch. I'm going to keep it default. I'm also going to run the binary uh, directly. And now, if you're using this in production, um, you'll most likely want to create, say, a systemd unit file or something similar, um, just so it starts cleanly, starts a boot. But for uh, testing, I'm just going to run it directly. And the configuration file by default should work just fine. So let's generate a event. I'm just going to log back in to generate a, a, a user login event. And if we go back to our plugins, we can see at the top here that we've generated a user.login event and that's been printed to stand it out. And we've got things like the user that generated the event, any timestamps, error messages, the MFA device used, um, for instance. So at this point, we've got FluentD successfully forwarding events to send it out. So we can move on to setting up Elasticsearch and Kibana. So I'm going to go to Docker Hub to find some images. I'll search for Kibana to start with. Open that up in a new tab and then search for Elasticsearch, um, which is used for indexing the events. Kibana is going to be used for visualizing them. So let's scroll down and we've got an example command. So we'll, we'll create a Docker network that all our containers will share so they can talk to each other um, easily. So I'll stop the plugin for now and we'll start that back up later. And we'll create the Docker network. I'm going to call mine logging. Back to Docker Hub, we'll select the Docker run command. And we need to change just a couple of things. Let's paste that in. Um, we'll use um, the latest tagged version, uh, which is version 7.14.2. And I'll also need to make sure I'm using the correct network as well. So I'll change that to logging. Okay, so I've got Elasticsearch running. Um, I need to go back to Docker Hub and we'll get uh, Kibana up and running as well. Through to our Kibana tab. And we'll go down to the uh, development mode command, copy the Docker run, um, very similar to the Elasticsearch one. And we'll also use the same version, so 7.14.2 and the network as well. So logging. So I've got Kibana and Elasticsearch running successfully. Um, we'll need to make some changes to FluentD. Um, right now it's printing to standard out. Um, we want to change that. So let's change, uh, let's go to the FluentD Docker image. Let's see if we can find some documentation to configure it. Um, we'll click on the readme, which will take us to the GitHub repo. And let's scroll down. So there we go, customize Docker file to install plugins. Um, and luckily for us, the example Alpine um, Docker file contains the Elasticsearch plugin. Um, so we don't need to make any changes there. So let's just copy that into our Docker file. Paste that in. And we'll also need the entry point um, as well. So we'll find that in the repo under the version we're using 1.14 and then Alpine and then entrypoint.sh. 
So we'll copy that and we don't need to make any changes there either. Entrypoint.sh and I'll need to mark that as executable as well. Okay, so let's build this. I'm going to tag mine as teleport-fluentd. Um, you'll probably want to choose a more suitable name. Um, and we also need to make some minor tweaks to the fluentd configuration um, from before. Um, rather than plan it out, we want to use the fluentd Elasticsearch plugin. So let's search for fluentd Elasticsearch in Google, see if we can find some configuration examples. Okay, so this example configuration seems pretty simple. So let's uh, copy that in. Uh, fluent.conf and under the matcher, we want to change the type from standard out to elastic search. We want to point it to our host. Um, since we're running this in the same Docker network, um, we're just using the image name, Elasticsearch is my host, and then the default port and log stash um, format. We'll set that to true. And that should be all the changes needed for FluentD. So let's run the Docker run command for uh, FluentD from before. And the only changes we need to do is we need to use the image that we just created that has the plugin. And of course, we'll need to uh, use the same network. So we'll have the FluentD, uh, Docker image, Kibana, and Elasticsearch all using the same network. So they can all freely talk to each other. Okay. So with all three components running, um, we can head to our Kibana instance. Um, now by default, the Kibana instance will be running on local host uh, port 5601. So let's go back to, oh, we'll also need to start the, the teleport event handler as well. So we've got the event handler forwarding events to our FluentD instance. We don't need to make any changes to the uh, event handler plugin. Um, the configuration file should work still. So let's go back to our browser and head to our commander instance um, on port 5601. You select Kibana and then add data. And we want to create an index pattern. So we should have um, at least one or two events already. So let's create the index pattern. I'm just going to use log stash um, and then star to match all those sources. And then the timestamp field is just called timestamp. So we select that from the drop down, and then we'll create our index pattern. You can see all the fields. We saw them in the standard out before. We've got things like the cluster name, any event codes, MFA details, uh, event type, the user that generated the event, and so forth. Um, we can also create some custom fields if we need to, set custom labels, etc. But I'll just keep that as default. Uh, so we'll go back to the overview now. So we'll click on the left menu and then go to overview. And we'll go to discover and just look at what events we have. So we can see the user login event from before. We've got myself who generated the event and then my cluster name, timestamp, and so forth. And from here we can, we can search events and see how many events we've got. I'll also just click refresh and see if I've got any more events. There we go. So I've got a bit more events as well. So I've got my nodes um, that are generating events, um, people logging into them and so forth. So with all the activity in my cluster and plenty of events that we've got, we can start to build some visualizations. So let's go to dashboard and we'll create a new dashboard and add our first visualization. So we've got all those fields on the left-hand side to pick from. I'm going to choose, let's go with participants. 
I assume this case is just me, but uh, it is possible to share our sessions between multiple people. And so this could be an interesting um, graph. I'm going to stick with uh, just a donut graph for now, and I'll save that. I'll call that uh, users. And let's add something a bit more sophisticated. So maybe the remote addresses of my nodes. And I'll go with, let's go with, uh, let's say a tree map to represent that. Oh, the heat map. Now let's go back to the tree map. And these are all the remote addresses of my nodes. And I like that, so I'll just add that in. Call it remote addresses. And then I'll, uh, maybe we'll go with the server host names um, for the next one. Um, down. Okay, let's go with the vertical stacked bar graph. It shows my nodes and how many connections um, over time. I'll give that a name, I'll call that nodes. And let's add just one more. So we've got session start times. Um, maybe we'll add something with this. And go for say a table. And we can add in maybe the participants, which is pretty boring because it's just me. and the server host names. I love the stop time. Okay, I think we're done with that. So we'll save that. And let's save our dashboard. I'm just gonna call it my dashboard. And now we've got our, our first dashboard that shows some, uh, some events. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, for more information, please see the link in the description. And if you've got any questions, please leave a comment below or join our community Slack channel. Thank you.